Welcome to Thought Leader Life, where we are helping to democratize thought leadership. Join us each week where we interview a new thought leader about what it takes to become and maintain thought leadership in a number of different vertical markets. To learn more, check out www.thoughtleaderlife.com. Hi, Mitchell Levy, the AHA guy from AHA That, and welcome to episode 147 of Thought Leader Life. I can't even begin to tell you the feedback we're getting and the excitement we're getting from the quality of guests and the topic we're talking about regarding this month, and we're focused on legacy. And uh, Lisa McDonald, I am so excited the host of Living Fearlessly with Lisa McDonald. Um, God, that, it's so interesting when you have your name in your name. But, but you're bringing <laughs> on some killer guests, and uh, we're having some great conversations. Oh, this has been fantastic. This is uh, interview number three for the Legacy Series, and I'm really grateful to not only you, Mitchell, in terms of co-hosting with you once again, but to have our friend here, Al Cole, who has interviewed both of us, and uh, links for that will be uploaded shortly. So we just want to say, Al, thank you for the gift of your time. We know how incredibly busy you are. Uh, this is phenomenal. Mitchell and I have been super excited and jazzed about this. Well, thank you. I, look, this is my pleasure. You've both been a guest on my show, People of Distinction, and I'm returning to compliment, the great compliment here, being on my guest. I appreciate both of you, the work that you're doing, and we're going to talk it up, get a lot of Facebook Live people really pumped up here. So thank you very much. Absolutely. So, Mitchell, you want to dive in? You want me to dive in? No, no. I, <laughs> We're all listen. unscripted here. I'm my, that's my style, organic and unscripted. This is absolutely beautiful. So, Al is uh, from CBS Radio. He is the host of People with Distinction. And, uh, Al, I'd love, to, uh, I'd love to have you just handle a softball question is what is legacy actually from your perspective in today's world what does legacy mean to you all right now i'm going to answer that in two ways and i think i'm going to take a little bit more than 30 seconds but there are two kinds of legacies there's a personal legacy obviously that you're kind of asking about the one that i always share with people because the personal well you know i mean that depends on how we see things and this and that but there's one generic that everybody ever born was involved with. And I always put it this way. When you were born, you and you and you, everybody, you came out of that birth canal, wherever that was, you were a baby. That's one of the biggest things that we have in common. And you, you said, wow, when you first saw a day, I'm here, I made it, I'm actually alive. Now, at that point, you were filled with love. You were all love. You being everybody, you were connected to the human family at that point, and you were just saying, well, I am just glad to be here and contribute whatever I can to this love process that I was born into. Guess what? That is everybody's legacy, and all we have to do to achieve any sort of personal legacy is to get back to the innocence of that little baby from whence we came. We came from that. Mm. And we can now go back into that and realize that everybody came from that. And you and you and you and you and everybody now shares a common legacy of loving each other the same way that you did when you were first born. As you do that, then you create your individual legacies after that. But you ain't going to create no individual legacy unless you get back to that baby within you, that beautiful innocence of love and appreciate and respect the love that everybody else can give in life. That's my answer there. Wow. Wow. Hey, Al. So Al's, talking about, Al's talking about a womb with a view. <laughs> because you've got a very special womb there. I, I, I love that. I absolutely love it. I'm, first of all, I, I have to say, I'll say this publicly, I just love your voice. It is so mesmerizing to, to listen to and, and for those that are interested, I mean, Al, voiceover artist, uh, guest show, I was on your show, amazing, amazing guy. And then listening to you, sometimes the most simplest things are the most important. And, and I love that answer is when you come out of your room, you know everybody. Yeah, it's true. 
<laughs> well, what I love about that is when people talk about legacy and there's no right answer or wrong answer, it's all individualized. Um, but most people, when they hear of the word legacy, they talk about, um, you know, and there has been tribute and, and testament to family and grandchildren and, and things of that nature. But a lot of people now associate legacy with business or a stature or, um, and I'm talking generically, not outside, not including the guests that we have been very gracious and fortunate to have interviewed thus far on the legacy series. Um, but I love the simplicity of your answer. And I really subscribe to that myself personally. Um, not unlike something I talk about and take advantage of discussing every opportunity I do, which is to reclaim your inner child, embrace your inner child, your inner spirit, um, because that's where we're our most wondrous. That's where our, we are our most trusting, our most curious, and that's where we, in fact, can become and be our most creative selves. We're not we're not we're not uh, attached to the stigma of not wanting to put ourselves out there for fear of reprisal or judgment or being ostracized by our family community, as you said in in your lovely answer. Um, so I, I just love that that you know that one eighty reconnect there and bringing you back to what's most fundamentally important because we lose sight of that in our busy world. And as adults who are inundated with bills and climbing the either the corporate ladder or the entrepreneurial ladder um, or whatever the case may be in the way people measure their own barometer for success. Uh, so I love that answer. Thank you, Al. Uh, and, thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. And now what's the, what would you suggest? So if somebody says, I love your answer, Al, I'm interested. What do I do? I want to be there. I want to do this myself. What, what are some of the steps you suggest people take? Visualization is one of them. That's a big term. It means illumination, <laughs> which is a big term too. So some people would say, what do you mean by that, Al? All right, visualization, illumination. Boy, I like the terms. What do they mean? It means actually the present, the future, and the past are linked time-wise. And if you, in your present, at any point, you visualize, where am I going to be? A year from now. Well, we always do that. And we do that business-wise. We do it sometimes personally. Where's my personal relationship going to go a year from now? Whatever. But I don't think we usually, and maybe never, where am I going to be a thousand years from now? Yeah. Mm. Where am I going to be 10,000? A million years from now. We mm. all claim that we are immortal souls. Or at least most of us do. That's the biggest aspect here. Visualizing a little bit of where you're not at right now and where you could be at your growth, greatness. Yeah, a thousand years from now. We all want to grow and we all say that temporarily we're going to grow and grow and grow as the years go by and we become more mature. Well, how mature can you get when you're a million years old? You're going to be more mature than you are right now. And if you just visualize that, Sit yourself down, take a little bit of alone time, and say to yourself, hmm, where am I going to be? You close your eyes. All of a sudden, that energy comes over you. We're energy creations. Mm -hmm. And that it doesn't have to be a realistic sort of thing. It, doesn't have, it can be imaginary. But that beautiful energy that we're getting from even that disposition of going out there a million years from now or a thousand years from now, all of a sudden, we're sparked with something. We say, wow, wait, wait a minute. I'm learning something right now. And that can be a present to your present. You don't have to be stifled and doubt and, you know, boy, this temporal world. Even though we live in this temporal world now, we're visualizing, we're getting that beautiful human energy and temporal energy that can be used back as a present to our present. And all of a sudden, we seem lighter. It is a light beam that comes back to us. We seem lighter. We are lighter. And we're treating people lighter, and they're treating us more lightly. And as they do that, we're loving each other. We're loving the experience of being alive. So that would be my answer to the question that I forgot you asked me. <laughs> yeah, no, Beautiful. I... Uh, Al, you're... <laughs> it's so mesmerizing. Light I can see. years ahead. That's why he can't uh, remember. I could see Lisa and I sitting there going, wow, that's so cool. But, you know, the uh, here's what's interesting. I, I, I hear I listen to an aha moment. So if you want to give yourself a present for the present, fast forward a thousand years and think about how your legacy will extend that far. And, and, I, and I know there are people who are 
watching this show and paying attention to what, what we do and go, man, I'll be happy if people remember me a day after I, I go away, uh, let alone a hundred years or a thousand years or a million years. And, and so let's, a, a million years just seems so far. Let's stick with a thousand, which, you know, you try to, you try to think back a thousand years in the past and there aren't that many names that we, we recognize. What are some of the things that people should be thinking about to put their legacy in place for a thousand years from now? Hmm. Oh boy. I, 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 I assume you're asking me, uh, homelessness and homefulness. Now we know that we live in a world of a lot of people homeless and in this country as well. And we know that we live in a world of hunger. A lot of people go to sleep hungry. A lot of people don't wake up. A lot of people die of hunger every year. Well, guess what? If we put a different phraseology on what it means to have a home, not just that edifice that we mortgage or that we rent, but also the home within. And that home within, if we do go a thousand years from now, in the same way that a thousand years ago, there were no such thing as automobiles. It was probably not even horse and buggy stuff. You know, it was the typical sort of locomotion and camels and maybe a horse or something like that, maybe not even the buggy. Well, look, we can actually visualize a different sort of home edifice. If we take maybe something like climate change seriously, where we don't need that sort of shelter from the elements, we can develop that. There are scientists right now probably working on that where we live in this grand bubble, this beautiful grand bubble of millions and millions of miles around not just the Earth, but maybe other planets where Weather is not a, it, it, that's not a condition anymore. Weather is not something that's an impediment to us. And so we don't need these big mortgages to complete our, uh, our view of, you know, the weather's going to get in and, and hurt us. We don't have to worry about the weather anymore. If we didn't have to worry about the weather anymore, there could be people living outside on the beach and loving it. There could be people who now we would call functionally homeless, who don't need that big mortgage, who are living within their means, and they don't need to protect themselves from the weather. And maybe they don't even need to buy fancy clothes and winter clothes to protect themselves from the weather that way. We're reducing a little bit of our debt to income ratio, we could say. And as we're doing that, money becomes a little bit less of a condition in our lives. We don't have to rely on money as much. We rely on now, well, you know, maybe that love energy a little bit more that I was talking about earlier. Now, see, I think this way. Mm -hmm. I got to give offbeat answers to actually simple everyday questions, but these offbeat answers are within our purview. Just like the internet was in our purview maybe, I don't know, what, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 if we had the foresight to visualize that way. So let's think of the home of really where the heart is. And let's also think that it doesn't have to be a million dollar home every all the time to protect us from the elements. Let's change our weather conditions. Let's get into real science and let's get into real spirituality that way. Beautiful. That's another answer. Beautiful. So a couple things simultaneously came to me, Al. You know, this happens all the time. So I'll try to hold both of these thoughts. So when we talk about visualization, you know, and many of the people that I interview, we talk about uh, daily practices, mantras, uh, proclamations, declarations, anything that they hold sacred in terms of getting in that the place of visualization, starting off uh, from a solid foundation of stillness and really getting clear on what they want their day to look like because when you can master your day you can do that repeatedly day in and day out and the next thing you know you've had a beautiful decade or you've had a beautiful thousand years or whatever the case may be so knowing how important visualization is to you uh, as part of your dna and a tool and a practice that you implement um, what are you visualizing from the moment you wake up in the morning before you do anything what, what is that for you? What does that look like for you? 
I love my mommy and daddy for getting me here in the first place. Hmm. Now, that's one of the ramifications of all of this. If we're talking about putting more emphasis on what we love, what we really believe is meaningful in our life, Mm-hmm. And what we also want to direct our relationships to, especially our love relationships to, why not start with the mommy and daddy? You know, if we have respect for ourselves, if we have love for ourselves, if we want to spread that love around, first thing we say is, well, how did we get here? Now, we can go upstairs and say, well, that master force got us here in the first place, that beautiful energy of love, whatever, you know. But it really was coming out of that birth canal. And it took two to make that birth canal create us, the mommy and daddy. If we respect our mommy and daddy enough, and I'm putting in child's terms right now, I could say mother and father, but I really want to get the point home. Even if we're 101 years old as opposed to one year old, we still had a mommy and daddy. We respect our own mommy and daddy, even if we didn't know the daddy. And sometimes maybe didn't know the mommy. Could have been adopted. We create our mommy and daddy on the inside when we say to ourselves, wow, again, I'm blessed to be here. I was put here, not by luck, but by two people who made love at a certain point. That's our term. So let's focus on the love. They made real love. I was the product of that love. Wow, I'm blessed. We feel that way. Every single person on the planet came about through their own mommy and daddy. Now we respect everybody else's mommy and daddy. And we don't have to put nobody down that way. We might still have difficulties with certain people, but the essential difficulties don't have to be there. The essential difficulty is that we don't respect the love that other people have for the people that they love. And sometimes we respect too much a little bit of the contentiousness. But if we start out with that mommy and daddy, as you were saying, Lisa, and then we go into our heart and we say, okay, everybody had a mommy and daddy too. They go into their heart. We're friends and we're not enemies. We don't hate each other anymore. We can solve so many problems just from that, I believe. Okay, that's beautiful. I love the sentiment. I, I love the spirit surrounding that. I play devil's advocate to everything, so I want to make sure that everybody who's part of the viewing audience, whether it be now or the encore when it's played back later, um, doesn't feel like their voice wasn't factored into this. So do you mind if we just go dark for a second and go devil's advocate? Can we do that? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. I'm living fearlessly. So yes, I mean, it's it, regardless of the circumstances surrounding the mommy, the daddy, uh, you know, going back to what you said about, you know, essentially two people made love and this is how you were created. Well, we know statistically for the world that I've worked into, that's not always the case. There are people who have been born as a byproduct of rape. And I don't want to make this dark, but I just want to acknowledge people who go, I got glossed over again. Or why is everybody talking about the uh, so-called airy fairy? Because I get that. People think a lot of what I say is airy fairy and fluff and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine. You know, I'm not here to appease people. I'm here to honor my spirit. Um, But if there's something you might want to say to acknowledge the other population of people who don't have um, the lovely story that you've just painted. And remember, and, and, and I hear you. I just want to keep us also focused on leaving a legacy. So, so answer right. that question from the perspective of sometimes we get brought into the life in a way that wasn't always positive or appropriate, but we still, that person is not different than any other human right. that's brought on this planet. Right. And I'm not dehumanizing everybody's existence. I'm talking about the people who might be going, oh, that wasn't really my story of how my mommy and daddy produced me. I just, you know, you, you call it inappropriate. That's probably more PC. I'm just saying rape, whatever. That's just that's how I talk. Yeah. Okay. Take no, it away, I can, Al. I can cut to the quick that way with legacy and also that mommy and daddy that we never really had or that mommy and daddy let us down. Earlier, I did mention recreate the mommy and daddy with mm-hmm. them. The recreation process can be as simple as, wow, that mommy and daddy that let me down, how come I'm still flying high? How come I'm still up there? How come I'm such a wonderful expositor of our human family? 
Now, if you don't feel that, then we can go a different course. But most people know that they have some sort of greatness within them, even if their mother and father let them down in a certain place, abandoned them. Or you know, maybe it was a rape sort of thing. You never know. But it was still two people, two DNAs coming together, you could say, a little bit of science there, that brought you into life. And if you value your life mm. at that particular yeah. point, and the mommy and daddy weren't so great, just reconstruct them. Yes. And forgive them. You know, forgiveness is a big part of this, people. You start to forgive, and then you say, well, you know, I can't be that high-handed about somebody else's life when they brought me into life, and wow, I'm enjoying my life. I love my life. And so I'm going to reconstruct that mother and father in terms of the image that I would really like them to have. Guess what? You start doing that. We live in an energy world that might go back to the original mommy and daddy with energy. And they're saying, whoa, hey, what's going on here? I feel like a different person all of a sudden. The child can recreate the parent. Absolutely. And that's the point. Well, I love that because we talk about reinvention process all the time. So whether you're going as far back as that to the basics uh, and building from the, the ground up or whatever aspect, whether it be your attitude, your approach, your mindset, um, your level of self-awareness, how it is you, you interact with the world based on your own level of uh, self-love and self-acceptance of yourself. Um, so you've touched upon something that's very key for me and something I talk about quite extensively uh, with most most of my radio guests and even in just my own individual pockets of circles of people that I call tribe um, because yeah life is a series of reinvention and so when we talk about legacy I think that's important because I think for people like yourself Al and Mitchell and myself when we get to this phase and stage in life none of us come out unscathed but what is it we've done with the gift of everything that's happened to us. Some people, you know, they still get stuck with trial and tribulation or hardship or strife. I see it as an opportunity to reinvent all the time. I see it as an opportunity to find the lightness and the brightness as opposed to remaining consumed and fixated on any perceivable darkness. Um, so when we talk about legacy, this is why you're on the show. We were very selective with the candidates of who we wanted to bring on the panel here. Um, your attitude really permeates uh, and resonates with both my messaging and how I live my life as well as I know for Mitchell here too and many of the people who co collectively follow both of us. Um, so I just want to say that's a very important message that you just um, pinpointed and I hope that that's a big takeaway for the people who are listening when they make that association with legacy. So if I, thank you, Lisa, if I now bring it back today, today, as opposed to a thousand years from now. We all have, just like we're demonstrating right now, we all have a camera, we all have a microphone. We have the opportunity to share uh, authentically who we are and what we do. And Lisa, if she doesn't hear something she likes, she's able to talk about it and say, aha, right? And that's recorded now for the journals of, of life. And so, what does legacy mean? You're out, you're doing what 350 guests a year or some phenomenal number. Yeah, about 300. So yeah. you're, you're helping other people create their legacy and, and put that, what is, what does that mean when you talk to others? What does that mean for you to be able to deliver that? I feel honored. Uh, very, very honored. And when I hear that I have helped to maybe change somebody's destiny, add to somebody's walk of life, uh, that, that is my purpose. Ever since I was a kid, I have prayed for helping people out, doing something that's going to be useful to other people and also useful to me, my own heart and soul. And so with, with my show, People of Distinction, I've been blessed that way. And I, I, I really do appreciate it. And I'll talk a little bit about the legacy aspect after i clue people in if they ever want to get in touch with me alcoholic at gmail.com that's a l c o l e h o l i c at gmail.com that's the name that uh, my cbs radio listeners gave themselves they call themselves alcoholics because they say al we love what you're doing there brother in fact we're hooked on it we're alcoholics my legacy is really to give out 
through all of the talents that I've been given, not just broadcasting, but also music, not just that, but writing books, not just that, but uh, communicating deeper messages in a deep, different sort of way to people who, wow, I never heard it put that way before, and they grab onto it. My legacy is ultimately to be able to say that, wow, my heart and soul has been attached to other heart and souls in this world. And that energy that we were talking about, it's a cumulative energy right now. It's not just Al Cole, and it's not just this person or that person or that person. I have now bonded with the energy stream of life itself in our time. That is the legacy that I would hold most dear. When I can do that, I'm doing it partially right now. I'm under no misconceptions that I'm doing it to the extent that I would want to. But that would be my greatest legacy. Joining our human family in that cumulative, beautiful love energy that passes on generation to generation to generation. And Al Cole was a part of that and a spurring part of it. Wow, that's a great legacy. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so I think... So what you said is, let me, let me see if I could summarize this episode in you. Uh, you were born. When you were born, you, you knew and loved everyone in the world. You've gone through life praying that you can add value back, to give value back to other people's lives and help, help them move in a direction that was more positive, i.e. servant leadership. And you visualize yourself as someone who will be remembered for a thousand plus years. How'd I do? How did you do? How'd I do in summarizing you? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's one of the summaries. <laughs> All right. Give me another one. Okay. Another one would be my music, actually. Because uh, that's been the lost passion of mine. I basically am a musician, a singer, a songwriter. And because of the broadcasting su success and maybe some of the other things that I do, uh, that's been lost. And so maybe particularly, I would like to touch people again with my music. I do. I play my music at my events, my People of Distinction Humanitarian Awards honoring humanitarian and creative unsung heroes. And they're in New York and Washington, D.C. to members of the U.S. Congress and also Florida and Atlanta, different parts of the country. Uh, but that's not enough. I want to get my music out there more and more. So that's another legacy that I'm building right now that I have built in the past. There are a lot of people that know about that. Uh, but it's just not known in the same way as what I'm doing now. So that's another pathway that I want to pave as far as legacy. And one other quick pathway would be the literary. I've written books and I've taken my time writing books. And this is not Al Cole talking right now. And this preceded Al Cole from CBS radio. Uh, I started writing when I was 10 years old because of the grace of my parents got me a tutor and all of that, and I was off to the races. I want to get that stuff on the radar screen as well. So it's the humanitarian thing that I was talking about, if we want to put it that way, mm -hmm. added with the musical and the literary as well with Al Cole. Beautiful. Do you sing, Al? Yeah. Can you yeah, sing something? Can I sing something now? Hey, my love. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, darling, tell me. Ow. Hey, yeah. Wow, lovely. That was a first. That was a first. <laughs> that was it. part. Yes, thank you. So, if you had to pick out of those two other gateways of passion, which one would you first want to delve back into? The musician Music. part of Al? Music, definitely. Music. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. I see that. So I, I, I hate to say it, we, we hit our, we, we've been mesmerized. The time warp engine has come and gone and we've hit our timeline. Are you line. serious? 
I know. Isn't that amazing? That's, been the, that, that's the fastest interview. <laughs> I, uh, so, but we have enough time. We don't have to cancel right away. We, it'll take a little bit. And, and I think, Lisa, what I'd like to ask you would be based on what you heard, and you could even bundle in the other uh, three episodes we've, we've done. Based on what you've heard, how would you like to summarize what Al has said? What does it mean to you? And, and maybe if you had any other, any other points of, of what, what does this episode mean to you? Yeah, and I appreciate you saying it that way because in I, I want to honor Al. We've done that with each other guest in terms of my summarization or my synopsis. Um, and I want to give Al full space and credit on that. So I love the ways in which you are unique, right? I mean, I, I really do. I mean, unique is a word that gets thrown around a lot, but there's not a lot of people I can honestly say where I, I mean, we all have our individual unique talents. There are things signature to each of us that make us stand out and apart from the rest. Um, but sometimes that comes from taking the time to actually spend time with people you emit that right off the bat and i love that about your energy i love that you are instantaneously unique um everything about you echoes that um when i see your picture this is the first time you and i have had face to face when i saw your picture i thought i want to i, I want to see this guy i want to talk to this guy there's something very and not, no coincidence, because I don't believe in coincidences, but there's something very youthful in your face. I'm not here to, it's not my business to know your age, um, but there's something very youthful about you. There's something very charismatic about you. There's something very vibrant about you. And when you talk about energy, I love people who talk about energy, who in fact emit beautiful energy a lot of people talk about energy but they don't embody that uh no judgment not dissing anybody but when you talk about energy it emits when we talk about uniqueness and the ways in which it would be specific to legacy your answer the way you think your introspective process your own personal download um it's beautiful i mean you're a very fascinating human being al very fascinating um, so I love this take on legacy. I love how you extrapolated that and you um, shared that back to the rest of us. I love, I mean, you're, you're, you're preaching to the preacher when we talk about anything that goes back into the universal childlike spirit, um, because I really do believe everything derives from that. And it's along the way through chronological age, through the responsibilities that come from being an adult, if we choose to focus on all of that and get bombarded by that or implode because of that. Um, I can tell that you truly believe in everything that you've said. You, you admit that. You admit that. Um, I have a lot of respect for that ideology. I have a lot of respect for that philosophy, not just because I subscribe to it myself, but even if I didn't, that would be one of the most unique answers or revelations or explanations um, anyone has ever offered on the subject of legacy, which for what that is and what that means, uh, that makes you extra unique, extra special, and extra beautiful of a human being. So thank you, Al. And thank you so much, Lisa. And I like the, uh, the word beautiful, love that word beautiful, because that is my special word for God, for that upstairs force that got us here in the first place, I call that force, that energy, beauty. So thank you for that beautiful, beautiful reflection. I appreciate it. And, and I have to say, beautiful only has three syllables, and I most of your words had five syllables in them, so I always just, I don't know about that. I, um, Lisa, I was, uh, I don't think I've felt the type of love from any other co-host for a guest as I did with just that reflection. So thank you for sharing and allowing the audience to feel that as well. For those people who want to connect to you, what's the best way to reach out? The birth canal. Come on, Mitchell, were you listening? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's not, that number one there. <laughs> number two and three would be, alcoholic at gmail.com as i mentioned earlier 
Uh, that's A L C O L E H O L I C at gmail.com has very special significance, as I mentioned earlier. My CBS radio listeners from day one, Al, we love what you're doing there, brother. In fact, we're hooked on it. We're alcoholics. The second way, I want you to go to my website, peopleofdistinction.org. Those three words, peopleofdistinction.org. We are all people of distinction. And you will see some of the people that maybe you know, you know as distinctive people who have been guests on my show. And you're going to see something that's down home as well. It doesn't have to have all the fancy fonts and all of that. But it's just row upon row of, I think, very useful and wonderful information for you, my human family, to see. And pictures and everything and YouTubes and videos and, and all of that. So charge there, peopleofdistinction.org. And thank you for the, uh, you know, my little promo there to uh, get people to contact me. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, Lisa, I just want, how do people reach out to you? Oh, thank you. So people can reach out to me. I'm all over social media as we all are. My preferred site is LinkedIn. Um, I can also be reached on my website, which is livingfearlesslywithlisa.com. And I can be reached by email at lisa at livingfearlesslywithlisa.com. Beautiful. And Al, is there- radio, C-suite too. The C-suite, right. And, and Al, do you want to summarize? Is there any... Is there a particular question we should have asked you that we didn't? Thanks for uh, letting people reach out to you. But is there, is there one last point of view that you'd like to share? I'll tell you, you know, this has been fantastic because you've given me the opportunity to express myself in so many ways. So there's not a lot left here in terms of what I would want to have said or whatever. I think I said quite a bit uh, at, uh, at your leniency, and I appreciate that. A lot of other shows, I wouldn't have had this opportunity to expand in the way that, uh, that I have. I will say one other thing. It's very important in our contentious times. And now I'm bringing it back down to earth here. Uh, we live in a planet where I think more than any other time on earth, uh, we're at a great opportunity area. And we're also at an area where we have fostered hatred in our society, or at least conflict. And one of the ways that, that I would, if I could prescribe certain directions in our society, think of this, people. If you pray at all, and I think everybody prays sometimes, you know, help me out. Boy, I'll never do it again. Uh, when you pray, don't just pray for yourself. And I don't think most people just pray for themselves. They will add their loved ones. But I'm saying don't just pray for yourself and your loved ones. Invent names, people. Pray for people that you don't even know. Now, it's very easy to invent a name. And it's a big world, a bigger universe. You invent a name to pray for, there's probably going to be somebody out there that's going to receive that prayer. And once you start doing that, you are creating yourself as, guess what? An angel in this world. And we need more angels in this world. I ain't talking about angel you know, people who uh, go about and give people other money, angel investors. I'm talking about be the angel investor in the heart and soul and the love energy that you can give out there, even to people that you don't know. It will come back to you. And sometimes you're going to be saying, wow, how come things are going better this way and that way for me? Somebody's praying for you and you started out by praying for them. Do that, people. Do it every night. Do it maybe a few times a day. You're going to find returns that you never, ever thought were realistic in this world. We live in a world of expansion. Expand your mind, expand your potential and your parameters with prayer that way for people that you don't know. That's the only thing I would add here, Mitchell. You have been great at asking the questions, and Lisa as well, and thank you for all the great indulgence here. Uh, and admittedly, something that's kind of like offbeat that I uh, do. You're absolutely <laughs> welcome. And uh, you heard it here, guys. That's the secret. You know, we, there's never been anything before that's been called the secret. Here it is. That's the secret. Sorry, tongue in cheek. Um, I, Al, I love it. I absolutely love it. 
So this is fascinating to me because when Lisa and I were talking about the concept of the show, we, there was a part of me that says, God, how is, we're going to, we're going to invite different guests. And, but the answers are going to be so similar. And, and Elisa, you're going to have to agree that, that couldn't be more further apart. All we've diverse. done three so far, and they've been so remarkably different. If, if I'm going to summarize what I didn't expect to have happen is the general theme that everyone's giving is really live for today, live for your fellow human, to be that servant leader, to help other people be successful, to help other people grow, learn, be happy. That's a piece that I didn't expect to come out of these, these talks. And so and now you just you you expanded on that. And I I actually I actually loved it. I have I have a lot of stuff to to think about, and and I really appreciate it. And I would actually like to just go on record as saying my guardian angel is an alcohol holic. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. And that actually, I, I think that has to be an aha message. That yes, is your, is your guardian angel an, an alcohol holic? Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. I love words. So <laughs> for those, uh, for one of the things that's new on my part of the world, uh, we actually just released this week, uh, ahathatradio.com. So if you're looking for inspiration to be, to hear other authors, what we're doing is our authors are reading their own books. So something, uh, Lisa, we could talk about when this comes out. Others are reading their own books, and then we're actually not just submitting them for release on the 23 different places like Audible, uh, but we also have it streaming on Aha That Radio 24 hours a day. So if you want inspiration, go to ahathatradio.com. Uh, for me, I am very interested in, in talking to you on the platform that you want to talk on. So feel free, just Google my name, Mitchell Levy. Um, if you come up to my TED Talk, so Mitchell Levy TED Talk, please feel free to watch that because that's a, a way in which we can also live life in a better way. Uh, if it makes sense for the, for the writer who's talking about that, go just take a look at being seen and being heard as a thought leader because there are components of how do we live our legacy today so that we're successful tomorrow. And then connect to me on the platform you want to play, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Snap, whatever wherever you sit is where I want to meet you. And uh, this was great. Al, sandbox. Let's all join in the sandbox. Yeah, exactly. Whatever sandbox that is, let's play. <laughs> Better get back to innocence, people. Yes. Back to innocence, playing the sandbox. Man, I love that. We've got, to, we've got to incorporate all this in the book. Anyhow, everyone, thanks for joining us for this episode of Thought Leader Life. I'm absolutely looking forward to the next one. Uh, and Lisa, Al, you guys were fantastic. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank Love you, gratitude. everybody. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Thought Leader Life. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and activate us by going to thoughtleaderlife.com slash activate. Till next time.